Hi YouTube, my name's Jeff and I'm the Veg Oil Guy. You know me and plaster, I'm always messing about with the stuff. So I decided to build a simple vacuum chamber to eliminate trapped air and improve the process. I took some scraps of plywood, and I mean scraps, as this is only a small chamber, about 8 inches square, which is ample for my needs. It's nothing difficult, just gluing and screwing the box together, but without a lid at this point. I decided to use one of these tank connectors to draw the air through, and I began with the world's bluntest force in a bit to drill a countersink hole. Then a spade bit to finish the through hole. It's just a matter of screwing this in with a spanner, but I applied a generous dollop of expanding glue to help things remain airtight. Once this was dry, I cleaned up the mess and supported the fitting with some car body filler. Then the last side of the chamber was glued and screwed into place. It's a nice sturdy box, but a little untidy. So some filler and paint were applied to neaten things along. I also added some rubber feet. Here I used a Dremel to cut a slot all the way around the upper rim. This will act as a key for the silicon strip that will seal the box. This square of plywood is a little larger than the top of the box and the centre square has been cut away to reduce its weight and allow venting, as you'll see in a moment. This got neatly covered with kitchen foil. Around the edges of this, I rubbed some petroleum jelly, as silicon won't stick to that. Back at the rim, a thin bead of silicon is run to fill the key slot. Then a much thicker bead is applied. You'll notice there's masking tape on both the inside and outside of the box. With most of the silicon tube emptied, the foil covered lid is pushed gently home, squeezing and flattening the silicon until it's roughly 6mm or a quarter of an inch deep. Then the foil in the centre is pierced to vent air and help the silicon to dry. Patience just isn't my thing, and it always costs me dearly and 24 hours later I peeled away the tape that was holding the foil in place. I then removed the plywood and look at the beautifully flat top, it's perfect. But I should have waited longer. The foil isn't sticking to the petroleum jelly, but the silicon is still wet in places because I was too impatient. This means I had to repeat this step again, so wait a few days before peeling back the lid. Now we need to do a little plumbing. If soldering copper parts isn't your thing, let me share this tip with you. This is how my dad taught me, and it's how plumbing used to be done. It makes a perfect joint every time. Starting with a pipe, clean the end thoroughly with steel wool or a tool like this. Add some flux. Technically, you're not supposed to use your fingers, but this has always worked for me. Heat the pipe with a torch, but avoid the area where the flux is. After a few seconds, you'll see a colour change. Notice here that the solder has a dab of flux on it. Touch the solder to the pipe, and when it's hot enough, you'll see the solder begin to melt. Spin the pipe and coat the whole area with solder. Then, using a cotton cloth, wipe the area clean. The old plumbers called this tinning, and it creates a thin layer of solder across the end of the pipe. The process is a little bit quick and hard to see, so I'll do another one. Clean the pipe, add flux, apply heat a little away from the fluxed area. Smear the area with solder, then quickly wipe away with a cotton cloth. And there's a nicely tinned pipe. The old plumbers used to sweat on fittings, but this tinning approach works great with soldering fittings. Take the fitting and clean it well. 
apply some flux. Clean the tint area of the pipe and add flux as before. Push the fitting on and apply heat, focusing mainly on the fitting. Watch the seam carefully. There, did you see it? That silver line? That's the solder in the fitting melting. This creates a solder on solder join and I've never had a leak yet. And I mean that. It's just simple preparation. Don't apply too much heat. Once you see the solder liquefy at the seam, just wait a second or so more, then pull the heat away. If you continue to heat, you'll drive all the solder from the fitting. So remember, once you see that silver line, you're done. Just let it cool down, then clean everything up with wire wall to remove the flux residue. You can see that I've drilled two small holes here. This pipe will release the pressure, or rather allow air back in. But rather than have a large opening at the top, which could become blocked with debris, I chose to block the end off and drill finer holes on the sides instead. If you prefer, you can use compression fittings and plenty of PTFE tape. Here I've included a non-return or check valve. The box needs a lid and I used one inch clear acrylic for this. I found it cheaply cut to size on the internet. I also found a cheap vacuum gauge on Amazon. I needed to drill a small hole in the corner of the acrylic and just twist this into place. And that's a completed vacuum chamber. It really is that simple. But does it work? Well, I made a pump based on the King of Randoms design, but modifying as necessary for UK parts and fittings. The pump gets connected to the vacuum chamber using flexible reinforced hose, and the handle of the pump gets, well, pumped. But first, set the lever valve to the closed position. Initially, it's necessary to apply just the slightest pressure to the lid of the box, just until the vacuum begins to grip. This is my son Michael doing the honours. At this point, we can see the pressure building steadily with each push of the handle. The pressure can easily be released with the smallest turn of the lever valve. So it works, the vacuum chamber holds a vacuum. Unfortunately, the hand pump isn't quite as successful. It doesn't take long before the pump seems to bottom out. It creates a vacuum beautifully and quickly, but once the air is too thin and the pressure too high, it just can't seem to grab any more. This meant I had to purchase a proper vacuum pump. This already had a built-in check valve, but for pump safety, it's a good idea to change the plumbing arrangement on the chamber to this. The second lever valve shuts off the flow to the vacuum pump and prevents potential damage that could be caused when the pressure release is opened. So let's test it. Here's the classic demonstration using marshmallows. The pressure release valve is closed and the pump valve is opened. The lid is placed on the box and it's necessary to apply just a little bit of pressure until the vacuum takes hold. So the pump is turned on and... Look at that! And remember, this is real time, it's not speeded up. That's the benefit of a smaller chamber. Did you see the marshmallows begin to shrink again? That means they've released all the trapped air they've got. So now comes the fun bit, releasing the pressure. The pump valve is closed and the pump can be turned off. Now the release valve can be opened. For some reason, I'm thinking of my mother-in-law again. Anyway, there you go guys. Whee! Building a vacuum chamber is as simple as that. Just make it sturdy and airtight with a size that matches your needs. I hope you enjoyed this video guys, and if you did, please like it. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already, and check out my other videos on my YouTube channel. So take care guys, and thanks for watching.